driving cars can be boring, so I decided to see if I could make my 16-year-old smart car drive itself. I'm going to go through what it took to get steering, brakes and throttle working on this car and then compare it to this Model 3 with autopilot. This is the Smart Roaster's steering rack. It was never designed to actuate the steering by itself, only do power steering, so I had to reverse engineer it. You can see it's got a logic board on top. What I do is I remove that and then I replaced it with my own design. This is a RC radio controller, which uh, this receives the messages from and sends them across canvas to this modified ECU. When I turn the wheel here, the steering rack moves. So this would be moving the wheels of the car. Quite a common way of actuating the brakes is using the ABS pump, which is buried down here. I didn't really want to be messing around with the ABS system though. So another option is to do it like Tesla and use an iBooster. They tuck this way under here, but I'll show you what it looks like on the bench. So this is the Tesla iBooster. This wonderful thing has a brushless motor back here, which with a pedal travel sensor here, allows it to assist the driver when braking. It's quite a bit more complex than this brake vacuum servo, made to this ECU, which makes it think it's still installed in a Tesla. So I've got the same RC controller here with the receiver sending a CAN bus message. So if I press the trigger, you can see the input rod moves, which is pressing on the brakes. Luckily, the Smart has a electric throttle. So this means it's driven by a servo motor. You can see the electrical connection here, which means I can control it. What I've done is I've spliced into the original throttle pedal so I can mimic pressing the throttle without the car actually knowing it's not a person pressing it. Putting all this together, I've got throttle, I've got steering, and I've also got braking, which means I've got a huge remote control car. With everything installed, the electric power steering is you, it's hidden down here. And I've got a big red button in case anything goes horribly wrong, I can press that, it cuts out steering. Then moving on to the frunk, that's the Tesla iBooster installed there, hooked up to the original ABS system. Down here, I've got a Ford Focus ST radar, which is crudely zip tied on. Moving inside. So to engage Open Pilot, I've reverse engineered the original cruise control store. You engage it by pressing this and then increase or decrease speed. Down here is a Toyota RAV4 steering angle sensor. Then moving on down here, this here, is a CAN bus gateway and power hub which takes in power from the car and it also distributes the CAN bus. Then that's got a OBD C cable which runs along here. It then runs up the A pillar, up around here to this which is the comma black panda. USB then goes down here into the comma self-driving system. Finally, after eight months of work, my car now has open pilot. Let's see how they both handle a few different driving scenarios. To engage autopilot, it's just double tap down on the gear shifter and that's it engaged. When open pilot is available, there's a little blue icon there. So if I press the button now, it will engage. And that's it engaged. And my hands are off the wheel. One of the major downsides of the autopilot is you have to keep your hands on the wheel and constantly nudge it, otherwise it disengages and becomes very unhappy. So you see this icon here, that means it's using the front camera to watch my face to make sure I'm still paying attention. So I, I don't have to keep nudging the wheel, which is one of the most annoying things about Tesla's autopilot. So for me, this is the main reason why I think open pilot is better than autopilot right now because you don't have to keep nudging the wheel and you can just sit here and let the car drive itself. 
to do a lane change on the Tesla, you just indicate and then apply a slight force and it goes over into the new lane. I just start indicating, same as the Tesla, and then it, I need to nudge the wheel to the left. It starts the lane change. I can cancel the indicator. And that's it, completed the lane change. So here's a tight turn on the Tesla. Let's see if it gets around this with no assistance. Yep, still going, no hands. Oh, wants me to apply a torque. Oh, and yeah, that wasn't great. Uh, disengaged. Here's the same tight corner in open pilot and as you can see it's making it round no problem at all. Same spe set speed of 40 miles an hour and that was much better than the Tesla. We're coming up to a lane split. Let's see how autopilot handles this. Doesn't know which way to go and then it picks the outermost lane. The same lane split with open pilot, there's no hunting of the wheel and it correctly picks the left hand lane. And autopilot is following the lead car, open pilot is now tracking the lead car and it's slowing down from the set speed to follow the lead car in front. Let's see how Tesla handles this little mini roundabout up here. Yeah, it's not happy with that at all. The same mini roundabout going straight over. And it's fine. Without any lane markings, let's see if autopilot engages. No, nope. it really needs lane markings, whereas open pilot can engage here. It doesn't need any lane lines because of the new laneless model. So it's driving this road absolutely fine, whereas Tesla refused to do it. Even though it's picking up lane lines, autopilot won't engage on this road. It says temporary unavailable. Open pilot will engage on this single track road if I engage it here. And you can see it's now steering itself along the road. So it drives this road fine, whereas autopilot doesn't on the Tesla. As you can see, open pilot is on par, if not better than Tesla autopilot. Okay, so yes, the Tesla has more features like it can detect traffic cones and pedestrians and it can also detect traffic lights, although here in the UK it stops for every light even though it's green, so that's kind of pointless. So for me it's the driver monitoring that OpenPilot has that makes it better. With Tesla you have to continually nudge the wheel, at least here in the UK, which is just really annoying. Anyway, back to the video. Although this is probably going to change when the Tesla full self-driving software gets rolled out. My next plans with the Smart is to install blind spot radars on the back that will allow it to do unassisted lane changes and overtaking. I'm also going to be putting the new Comma 3 hardware in which has improved cameras and open pilot navigation.